Welcome to Sullivan's Island, one of my very personal favorite beaches here in Charleston. Sullivan's Island is different from all the other beaches in Charleston because it just has such a small, sleepy town beach vibe. I really wanted to take you along and show you some of the highlights and everything it has to offer. It's also very rich in history, dating all the way back to even the Revolutionary War, which you will kind of see how it's sprinkled in the island even into modern day, which is super, super cool. And I just respect the town for doing that so much because it really did make Sullivan's Island what it is today. But with that being said, let's enjoy this beautiful day together and let's explore Sullivan's Island. So Sullivan's Island is a two and a half mile long barrier island at the mouth of the Charleston Harbor and it is right next to Mount Pleasant and Isle of Palms. So people that live in Mount Pleasant typically go to either Isle of Palms or Sullivan's Island and there's two different ways that you can get into the island. So the first way is through the Ben Sawyer Bridge through Mount Pleasant and then the other way is through Isle of Palms by taking the Hunley Bridge, which I will go over later why it's called the Hunley Bridge. But for this video's sake, we're gonna go in through the Ben Sawyer Bridge since that's the main entrance essentially into the island. Sullivan's Island is one of my favorites just because it has such a small town charm. It's very chill, very relaxed. And once you come into the island, you're gonna hit their main street, which is essentially their downtown. And this is called Middle Street. So this is where there's a bunch of shops and restaurants. There's a few businesses there. This is where their town hall is located, fire station, all of those things. So a few really cool restaurants that they have on Middle Street. One is Poe's Tavern and they have absolutely amazing burgers. It's named after Edgar Allan Poe who's actually stationed here from 1827 to 1828 at Fort Moultrie. There's also the Longboard, there's Dunleavy's Pub which is an Irish pub, and then there's also High Time which is like an American cuisine. And sprinkled throughout here you'll also see some shops and a few other businesses like this building here has a few businesses. And attached to this building is Mex One which is a coastal cantina. There's also the obstinate daughter and then their partner beard cats and of course an ice cream shop and here is sea land so you can rent bikes paddle boards and all kinds of water sport activities so also on middle street is a really nice park so sullivan's island has a lot of revolutionary war and civil war history so there's a lot of batteries that are sprinkled throughout sullivan's island that were used as the endicott defense system so this helped us to see warships coming in from the waterways that we couldn't see down at ground level so this just elevated to where you could see everything and attack them before they could attack you this park is super nice because it offers something for everyone. There's two different playgrounds. So one is for more younger kids and then there's one for more older kids. There's basketball courts, picnic tables, there's tennis courts. There's also courts where you can bounce the ball against a wall. So if you don't have a partner to play with, you can just do that. And right next to this park is the town hall and also the fire department. And across the street from these is the post office. And there's also some more restaurants. Sullivan's Fish Camp is really great for fresh seafood. So we're gonna make our way down Middle Street and about a street over is the Edgar Allan Poe Library, which is located right next to Sullivan's Island Elementary. So Edgar Allan Poe is a very prominent figure here on Sullivan's Island. He was stationed at Fort Moultrie from 1827 to 1828. And this is actually in Battery Gadsden, which was an art artillery built in 1903 and the town has taken this battery and made it their cultural center which is super cool. So moving a little bit further down the island is going to be Charleston Light, which is Sullivan's Island's lighthouse. It was the last major lighthouse built by the federal government in 1962. It was decided to build this in the 50s when Morris Island's lighthouse was in danger of being destroyed by erosion. And here is another battery, Battery Jasper. This one actually sits along the beach. There's a lot of free parking here, but this was the main Endicott system battery and was completed in 1898 when the Spanish-American War began. And very close to this is four. Fort Moultrie. Fort Moultrie is a national park. It was built in 1776. There is a visitor center directly across from the fort where you can pay your admission fee and you can also walk around and see different artifacts and relics that they have found that are from the different time periods and different parts of the history of Fort Moultrie. They also have an observation deck which is super cool so you can see the beach and the water and the fort and it is just really really interesting to see it from this perspective and you can see the 
size of it and more so of the layout this way. There's also the grave of General Moultrie. He did command this fort. Fort Moultrie was the site of the major Revolutionary War battle, the Battle of Sullivan's Island. It was the first British attempt to capture Sullivan's Island and after nine and a half long hours commanded by General Moultrie, they took this victory and it was from then on named Fort Moultrie. Fort Moultrie was one of the many places that fired onto Fort Sumter, which kicked off the American Civil War. So there's just so much history in this one location. There's actually been cannonballs that have been recovered from the beaches here. And there's artillery cases that are still embedded in the sand as you walk further down the beach. So the west end of the island is bordered by the entrance to the Charleston Harbor. The north is by the Intracoastal Waterway. And then to the east is Breach Inlet. To access the beach, there are different stations, which are just different walkways that connect to the beach. So you can just decide which one you wanna to go to. I highly suggest catching a sunset here if you're able to, especially at Fort Moultrie. You can see it set on downtown and it is just absolutely stunning. So the homes here tend to start around one to two million dollars and they go on up into the multi-millions and there's definitely a mixture of beach bungalows mixed with these modern custom homes. There are a few different reasons as to why Sullivan's Island is so expensive aside from its location. First off, there are mostly single family homes on the island. There is a very, very small percentage of condos and there are zero townhomes on the island itself. And along with that, each lot is at least half an acre and can't be subdivided and the island does not allow any short-term rentals under 30 days, which contributes to its small town charm. And then as we head to the opposite end of Sullivan's Island, right next to Isle of Palms, we're gonna hit Breach Inlet. So Breach Inlet separates Isle of Palms and Sullivan's Island. So Breach Inlet holds a lot of history. This is another site where the Patriots had defended against the British during the Revolutionary War. So the conditions of this inlet are very treacherous. It's advised to not swim here. Back in the Revolutionary War, the British had taken Isle of Palms and were trying to cross the inlet onto Sullivan's Island, but they were able to hold them off and took victory and then also in the Civil War, this is the site where the H.L. Hunley departed into the harbor to sink the USS Housatonic. So that is going to wrap up Sullivan's Island from its pristine beaches, small town feel to its historical charm. This island is truly unlike any other here in Charleston. If you or anyone you know has any questions pertaining to Charleston or real estate, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye! <music>